So in this problem, we're told a 975 kilogram sports car, including driver, crosses the rounded top of a hill, radius equals 88 meters, at 12 meters per second. Determine A, the normal force exerted by the road on the car, B, the normal force exerted by the car on the 72 kilogram driver, and C, the car speed at which the normal force on the driver equals zero. So we have three parts here, but uh, let me split them off with A, B, and C like this. But uh, we let's first understand what's going on. So we have this car, and it's going to be going uh, atop this rounded hill. And so I want you to imagine this hill as a basically like one big circle. And so we know the radius of the circle, they tell us, is 88 meters, right? The radius of our hill here. And then we know at the top of the hill, they're traveling 12 meters per second. Uh, we're also given the mass of the sports car and the driver total. So I'll call it MT, I guess, is 975 kg. And then the mass of our driver, I'll call it MD, is 72 kilograms. And so, uh, yeah, that's the basics of what's going on. So let's start with A, and then we'll solve the rest. So for A, we want to find the normal force exerted by the road on the car. So since we're dealing with the car here, we want to draw the free body diagram of what's happening for our car here. So we know we have the force due to gravity acting straight down mg on our car here. And then we also know we have the normal force, uh, which acts upwards perpendicular to uh, the, per the place it's touching. So perpendicular to this, we have that. And so if we sum the forces here, it's going to be equal to mac, right? Because we know mf, or f equals ma, but in this case, we're going around in a circle like this since we're at the top of the hill. So the sum of the forces equal mass times the centripetal acceleration since we're going in a circle like this. So we have mac. That's that. And then another thing you need to realize is that uh, when we sum up the forces here, if it goes inwards, you like to count it as positive. And if it goes outwards, it's negative since we're going in a circle. So inwards of the circle is our force mg. And then we have minus our normal force here, right, which goes uh, out like that. And so if we want to solve for the normal force, which is what they're asking us for, right, what is the normal force exerted by the road on the car, uh, all we have to do is solve for f sub n. So f sub n equals, I'm just moving it to the other side and then minusing mac. And you basically get this, uh, get this. So the normal force is equal to the mass of our object. In this case, we're talking about the dry, or the car and the driver. right? So we have to combine their masses, which they give us. So uh, yeah, so I'm just going to factor out the m. So it's basically g minus a sub c. So doing this now, the mass was 975, I believe. Uh, yeah, and then g is 9.8. And then we have to find a sub c. So a sub c is the centripetal acceleration. And this right here is equal to uh, v squared over r. So this is the formula for the centripetal uh, acceleration. So what is our linear velocity or tangential velocity? It is 12 meters per second. And then what is the radius? So our radius here is uh, 88 meters. So you have 12 squared, which is 144, and then you're dividing by 88. So 1.636, we'll say. 1.6364. So plugging this in for our a sub c, which we just found, uh, we can just plug in the numbers now and solve. So 975 times 9.8 minus the value we just found, you will get an answer of 7959.55. I'm going to round to 7,960 newtons. You can round whoever you'd like. But essentially, this is going to be your normal force acting on uh, the car here. Right, so this is your answer to A, so 7,960 newtons. And I kind of went into B, so I'm going to move these down a bit. So let me just erase that or cross it out. Um, and now for B, let's do that. So for B, it's essentially the same thing, except for we're just looking at it for the driver. So uh, I'm not going to go through all the steps again, but uh, essentially some of the forces equal MAC, where MAC equals the mass of our object. In this case, we're talking about the driver minus the normal force of our driver.
right? So exerted from the car onto the driver. And so basically the only thing that's changing in this problem is the mass we actually use. So everything else is essentially the same, right? Because you still have these formulas. It's just, we're talking about the driver now and not the car as our object, just the driver. So we still have MG, we still have F sub N, and all the formulas just work out the same, but we're dealing with a different object now. Instead of the driver, it's the car, or sorry, instead of the car, it's, or and the driver, it's just the driver. So we're gonna use the same formula here. So if you don't understand how we got that, just realize it's the same as we did for the car and the driver. So F sub N again is gonna be equal to M times G minus AC, but this time our mass is uh, 72, right? So they tell us the mass of the driver is 72. So we have 9.8 minus uh, 1.6364. So hopefully that makes sense. The only thing that changes is the mass there, which makes it a lot easier to solve. But you'll get 587.78 newtons. Uh, so you can round whoever you'd like. I'll round to 588. So about 588 newtons is your normal force, uh, right? That the car is going to exert onto the driver there. Um, so this is your answer to B. Now let's move on to C. So for C, we're looking at the car speed at which the normal force on the driver equals zero. So um, let's go ahead and sum the forces again. You'll see how this works in a second. But we're going to sum the forces on the car, right? So the car speed at which the normal force on the driver Okay, so now we're going to sum up the forces on the driver here. Once again, it's F sub N minus MG. So we have MAC equals F sub N minus MG. Once again, if it goes inwards, it's positive. Or, sorry, it's MG minus F sub N. That's my bad. Right, because if it goes inwards, it's positive. If it goes outwards, it's negative. And we have our MG, which points down into the circle. And F sub N points out, outwards. Okay, cool. So we have that now. And uh, they're basically telling us in this problem, we're trying to find the velocity at which the uh, normal force is zero. So if we want to find that, we just set the normal force equal to zero. Right? Because we want to find the velocity when this value is zero. So if we're minusing a zero, it's still that. And then we want velocity, but how do we get velocity from this formula? Well, a sub c is v squared over r. So you have this formula here when the normal force is zero. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just really a matter of solving. Uh, notice we have a mass on each side, so they cancel. Uh, and then you just have v squared over the radius equals the gravity. Uh, and then you could just multiply both sides by r. Uh, and then you would square root. So v equals the square root of g times r. And yeah, so this is going to give us our uh, velocity when the normal force is zero. So that's what they wanted, right? The car speed at which the normal force on the driver equals zero. So this is our car speed. This is uh, what we get when it's set to zero. So yeah, so we have uh, the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant 9.8, and then multiplying by the radius, which is 88. Plugging this into our calculators, so let's see what we get. You're gonna get 29, 29.4, yeah, 29.4, or 36, 37, I guess, which is 29.4. That's how I'm going to round. Uh, and then the units, obviously, for velocity like this is just meters per second. So this is going to be the speed when the normal force acting on our driver, yeah, is equal to zero. Uh, but yeah, so keep in mind that mass actually didn't matter, so uh, it just crossed, crossed out like that. And so this is your answer to C, your answer to B is right here, uh, and your answer to A was here. So basically, just keep in mind, we had to treat this like a circle here where it's moving um, right around like this. Uh, and then we just summed the forces, and then we were able to uh, solve for our normal force. Uh, and yeah, so we just changed the masses for B and A uh, because we were just doing it from a different object. Um, and yeah. So these are going to go ahead and be your answers, and hopefully you found this video uh, useful.